Uh, if you guys are interested in doing this to your Kit Fox, you know, whether you want a full system or the half system, um, send me an email at bowandarrow at yahoo.com. I'll get you a quote as fast as I can and we'll get you set up with, with uh, tech support on how to install these brakes. I'm always available on the phone to help you guys through that. If you're local, I can even come and give you a hand. So um, go ahead and send me an email. And if you like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Share it with a friend. Thanks. I'm working on installing the Laker leading edge. Um, this is the leading edge piece that most of the kits just use this piece the full length. Uh, the Laker leading edge, you're going to cut this into 10 one and a half inch pieces and place them at the uh, number one, three, five, seven, and 10 ribs. And then this will uh, act as a shape shaper for the Laker leading edge. Use this template here to make sure they're placed appropriately. There is a right side up and a wrong side up. So they are not symmetrical. So you gotta make sure you look at the uh, directions and orient those appropriately. And these are all glued in with high saw already uh, in place. So I'm gonna get those composite pieces trimmed up, drilled and clecoed into place to the wing. I'll show you a couple cutouts on here that I wasn't sure just went ahead and did it the way I want to do it, and whether you guys would do this, I don't know. Um, but the, this is the bottom side of the wing where the doubler is. Um, I went ahead and cut that out because it sits much more flush. I mean, you could have it bubble over that, but it's not going to be consistent. So I went ahead and notched that out. And there's a notch right here for the uh, uh, jury strut, bra strut bracket. And, and then there will be one right here. I gotta cut out next. And that's a circular cut, so I might use uh, something other than the Dremel tool to make that real smooth. And here, fit real nice on the edge. So tomorrow, uh, you do a number of clecos up the end piece, and then two at each rib cap. And then down here, I'll probably do several on both sides to line that up. But that seam came out pretty nice, remember considering. So when that's all done, maybe throw a little super fill in that seam just to make it real nice. Um, I have noticed that, uh, I don't know if it's from their mold, but the leading edge in the same spot on all four pieces, there's some bumps, I don't know if you can see them. There's some bumps along the edge. So this is all gonna need to be sanded because if you covered that, it looked pretty ugly. So it's right there. It's I had an interesting comment on my last video uh, from a guy who said he wanted to see more of the actual work and not just showing you the step and the result, step and the result. Um, so I'll try that for a little bit. Let me know what you guys think. If you wanna see the videos go quicker and just kind of step by step, here's what I'm gonna do and then the final result, or do you wanna see me doing the cuts and the measurements and the markings and stuff like that? I can speed them up. Um, whatever, you know, I'm doing this mostly as a, as a reference for how to do these builds. So um, whatever you guys want. I, I don't mind leaving the camera on and, and uh, showing the actual work as well. So uh, shoot me a comment on that. So today what I'm gonna do is uh, drill the holes for the Clegos to hold these uh, fiberglass pieces in, sh in place. 
and then we'll get ready to glue them on. All right, so I'm about ready to glue this. There's one thing that bothers me just enough that I'm gonna do something about it. And again, it's pretty anal. It doesn't make any bit of difference in the performance, but fit and finish wise, the lineup of the two panels is off by about a 16th of an inch right here. So I'm gonna tape that off so that those line up perfectly. And I'll tape it back probably to this point and just kind of see how I can get rid of that. Okay, <clears throat> so let me show you what I wasn't happy with. There's a contact point underneath the fiberglass along that bracket. So it's bulging this, this portion out. So you're not gonna be able to glue it down. If you do it, glue it down, you can see how it flares out towards the bracket there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a relief here and up this side. Now we'll allow this piece to kind of flip out and this piece to be well to be glued glued down and then I'll just take super fill when I'm done and ease that edge, sand it in, and fill it. So I bought this uh, glue dispenser. So basically it's this thing here and a tube, so I'm gonna put one of the high saw, of the two parts of high saw, and put them in each side. And then these little uh, plugs go in there, and to be perfectly honest, I don't know which side. <laughs> and you put these on the end of the tube, this mixing nozzle, cut the width of your bead that you want, and you'll be able to force that much glue through and this tip. All right, I didn't get a whole lot done today because I went down to Lincoln to look at a, yet another airplane project. Wife was super excited about that. Um, what I'm doing right now is working on mounting up the pedo tube mount. So I gotta decide how flush to mount it, like how the brackets work with the mounting plate. 
I'm gonna get that in and get the plumbing run for the pedo. Well, good morning, fellow Kit Fox enthusiasts. I am just about completed with this pedo tube installation. The uh, metal portion will be flush with the top of the rib and the false rib. So when I cover it, the covering will contact this piece of aluminum and the stack will stick through nicely. And, and the pedo tube itself will go in like that. And I just mixed up some super fill. I didn't film that because it's kind of boring. Just mixed it up and placed it on the seam between the two panels. I'm um, letting that dry up and then I'll sand that so I have a nice uh, seamless uh, union there between the two. Alright guys, so I've got the uh, second wing leading edge drying. So I started in on the flapper on. So I've got the, there's this bracket that goes in the uh, inboard section. So the first one's in and riveted and glued. So I might be a little loud with the fan, but I just wanted to show this in case someone had any questions about this uh, end piece on the um, flapper on. So I had to sand it a little bit around the edges of the bracket where the powder coat had a little bit of ripples in it. And then about a quarter, oh, eighth of an inch off the back on this one just to get it to fit in there. But it should be a flush fit all the way, up, you know, right up against the aluminum all the way around. And then I drilled the holes top and bottom. They say five, but four work better spacing because the back one they show on the plans drills through the aluminum and there's no bracket there because the bracket that turns and comes in here stops right about there. So if you drilled a hole here, it wouldn't be doing any good at all. So I did four holes on top, four on bottom. Click on them. I just put the glue on. So I will uh, rivet these next. And this is the second one. So that end of the flapper on will be ready for assembly. Um, now I'm working on doing this wing tip so I've got to trim the back of the flap around to make it line up with that all right now what I'm doing is drilling the holes in the trailing edge on the bottom skin for the drainage holes the weep holes um, that's because the hinge holes on the top will draw water in if you're washing it or in the, if you're flying in the rain so there's a hole placed three quarters of an inch in from the trailing edge on the bottom directly in line with each of those hinges. So I already did the other one. Started with this hole. There's one, two, three, uh, there's four total. All right, so some updates on the flapper on. I drilled all the drain holes on both of them. I think I did both of them. And um, talked to Brandon at Kid Fox about these rivets, and you absolutely should put the rivets in every eight inch spacing on the trailing edge. Um, I don't like the prop, the pop rivet option, so I was able to track down a hand squeezer. <laughs> Thanks to Will for uh, letting me borrow this. I was hoping he had a bigger one, <laughs> but uh, this will do the trick. So I got to set up some practice uh, pieces of metal to set the depth and see how I like uh, you know which uh, different dies to put in there to set it all up um, but then I'll be using solid rivets for the back and they'll be flush so I gotta dimple them and then uh, on the bottom side where the rivet sticks out I'm gonna try to get a nice little rounded almost like cherry finish on it so 
uh, I'll set these up and play around with that. Okay, I finished up the right flapper on. You can see this is the bottom side of the rivets. Top side, the plastic's still on here, but you can see they uh, are totally flush. And so we'll uh, move on to number two. Okay, so I'm working on these uh, flapper-on counterbalance weights, and I want to show you guys something real quick. There's no knock on Kit Fox, um, what well, is a little bit. These are really not symmetrical, so I'm going to show you what I mean. So I set these all up so that the weight is in the same location, so you can see the straight line with the weights. Now look at the difference in the position of where the leading edge is. Look at that jump. Look at the difference in the position of the weights. Okay. Now I know that's probably not a big deal, but if you're over a quarter inch further out with a weight, it's going to be different balance than the one that's further back. Because if you put the two that matched on one side and the other two that match on the other side, you're, they're going to be out of balance. So by s splitting up the unmatched set on each flapper on, they'll be more in balance. That should make the weight distribution of these weights symmetrical between the two flapper ons, even though the, the, the actual weights themselves are not symmetrical. Same part number, all four of them, all four of them are different. All right, another day on the flapper runs. So this was the left one that I finished up getting the uh, counterweights clicoed on yesterday. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one up before I move on to the next one. Um, I like trying to do both of them with one batch of glue. Moving them around and everything might be a little difficult. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix up a batch for this. Get the glued on, click or uh, riveted in place, then I can swap it out with the other one and get going on the other one. Alright guys, so the number two or the right uh, flapper on, uh, the weights are installed. And I like to go ahead and use flush rivets for the back portion of the hinge. Pop rivets for the rest, you have to use pop rivets for the blind ones. Um, but I just like the flush rivet setup better. Alright guys, right now I'm working on these uh, false ribs that go on the bottom side of the gas tank. And I'm also trying out a new microphone. Check it out there. I made a template that goes over the gas tank. It's a much smaller, thinner piece. And then cut those out of the original rib, uh, false ribs. And came up with, with these guys. So um, I've already placed one set on this wing so I'll show you what it, what I did it tucks underneath the composite leading edge and these are all still taped together but these will spread out so it'll be one two three one two three and you can see with the level that it matches the one and three rib perfectly and if you slide the level back and forth it matches that curvature and then next I'll make spacers underneath the number two bottom rib cap to match that same um, rib shape 
Uh, in order to do this cut, uh, you need to have, you really need to have a bandsaw. And I didn't have one. I've needed one for a while. And this was a good enough reason, along with having to make the uh, little jig you need to finish up the flapper, the flapper ons where the hinge mounts, uh, or the control horn mounts. You need a, a bandsaw for that as well. So went down Home Depot and got a Ryobi. Um, you know, it's it's not a fantastic one, but it did a good job. Glad to have that tool in the shop. It, it will get a lot of use. So, anyway, that's the update. Working on the false ribs underneath the wing, underneath the fuel tanks, and trying out the new microphone. Making progress. Back to work. Hey guys, so I was waiting for that glue to dry, and now that I have the uh, new bandsaw, I went ahead and made the jigs for the um, flapper on. You gotta make two of these guys up, and they clamp around the flapper on so you can set the control horn position and, and then uh, drill and rivet it in place. Hey guys, so I'm gonna just finish cleaning up the, uh, the leading edge here. Super fill's all done on the seam. Uh, I've got the wingtip um, aluminum pieces in place. I'm going to drill those and Cleco those in place. All right, so moving on to the flapper on hinge brackets that go inside each of the odd number ribs. This bracket's going to be placed inside here, like that. Then the uh, top bracket will mount down through the flange. So a good solid rigid support for the flapper ons. Okay, so cut the first holes. And it's really hard to duplicate those holes because you're gonna, you can't just lay one on top of the other. What I did was created a little um, template. I how it's supposed to go on there. There you go. Little template, the holes drilled in it. I can lay this template up on the back of each one and then mark the holes and then go over and drill them. So it's a little trick to, to make all those uniform.
All right, so I just wanted to show you how to set up the flapper ons here. So what I've done is taken, as per the directions, one of the top brackets and put, put them together with the uh, the uh, bolts, and you put a washer in between the two to simulate the uh, hinge on the flapper on. I want to tighten those down so that that's straight. Then you position those based on the measurement from the furthest uh, hinge to the inside for this hinge. So for me, that came out to 11 feet 10 inches. So that's on the one number one rib and the number nine rib. Those are positioned. And what you want to do is you want to measure it from the top of the bracket and then again from the bottom of the bracket so you make sure that they're parallel. Uh, it's very important that they're parallel so you don't get any binding in the hinge. So again, that's going to be the end hinge and the hinge at the very uh, root and those will give you your distance for those first two brackets and once those first two brackets are drilled then we'll attach the flapper on to it and then we use the hinges um, that are on the flapper on we'll, we'll put this bracket and bolt it up to those hinges flip them up into place and then make sure they're all positioned properly on the on the uh, rib Okay, it looks like the time lapse got hung up there. Right? Camera overheated. Um, so what I did is went ahead and mounted up uh, the outboard hinge and the inboard hinge. I have the flapper on hung, and all these uh, intermediate hinge arms are lined up. You'll notice I taped off the uh, around each hinge, and that's to prevent any of the drill shavings to go from going down into that slot when I am uh, drilling the brackets into the wing. So the next thing I'll do is I'll mount up those brackets to the hinge and then line them all up, measure them, uh, I'll clamp them in place, make sure everything's good and that the uh, flap run doesn't bind at all. And then I'll go ahead and drill those and click them. So uh, hopefully the time lapse will work this time. Okay, so everything's clamped in place and ready to be drilled. So what I ha also like to check is that it moves free without binding. There is a tape on all the hinges, so it, it has a little bit of friction from the tape, but there's no binding. Um, everything's parallel and measured, lined up. And what you're checking is for the um, bracket and the arm to line up with the center of the slot. So if you move the tape down that arm is right in the center of the slot and that's the case on all of them these are all perfectly lined up so I'm real happy with that it means the wing was built very true thank you Kit Fox okay so it looks like uh, everything's done here with this flapper on on the left wing now everything's mounted up um, none of these brackets get attached until after covering. Um, it works good. Everything came out nice. Uh, I still have to uh, mount the uh, control arm pivot point, but that'll be done after paint. And uh, so the wings are pretty, pretty much done except for the wing tips. So it's time to take them out of the rotisserie and uh, get to work on uh, the wing tip uh, fitment and then running all the wiring and uh, putting the arrow LED lights in. Uh, other than that, the wings are they're good to go. I got a little bit of varnish work to do on some of the ribs, but um, they're real close. So I'm gonna cut this one off here. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this will be uh, it on the wings. I might do a little bit of a, a clip on the wing tip uh, in the installation when I get to that point. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much how you do the quick build wings on a Kit Fox 7. So thanks for watching. Searching for a home Despite the storm that hears We're still on board Dancing in the moonlight The world just stop and stay